Hello everybody and welcome to the Kenny Hack. For this video we're going to be going over how to make these light up globes for holidays and makeshift bedroom lamps, maybe for your kids or for fun. And we're going over the things you'll need to buy and kind of how to do them. This is a video of the one I'm going to be going over and this is running at four times speed just for reference. So the first thing you're going to need is one of these light up bases. You can find these on eBay and Amazon, I'm sure. Usually the more of them you buy at one time, the cheaper you're going to be able to get them. They're just a standard crystal rotary slideshow is what they're called. If you just look up a four inch rotating light up base, you'll get a lot of options. I think I ordered a four pack of these and it cost right around $50. So right around $12.50 and I was able to get it in under a week off of eBay and I'm sure Amazon's the same way. So you're gonna need one of these and these here, you can't select what light color they're projecting, they just randomly rotate through the light colors and you can't really control which way the mirror is rotating. Just pretty much it randomly changes directions. I think it, like every time it cycles through a power cycle, it'll change, reverse its direction so a little bit of a problem is there that you know, not much selectability, I guess, in these bases. But for $12, they're, they're going to work just fine for what we're using them for. Now the next thing you're going to need is some glass cylinders. This one here, I believe, are mostly used for like candles and display pieces. And when I first thought of doing this, I really wanted one that had a lid on it. So I could trap all the light inside and project up through the bottom. And you kind of get fixed in that way of thinking. And so I ended up buying this at Michael's. And I think this was around like $7 for this little glass jar. And it works really well. I really like the looks of it and everything. But as I thought about it, I was sitting at the store right when I was buying these things. And I thought, well, why don't I just tip the glass upside down? solves all that problems you just have to paint one layer you don't really need a lid so then i ran back across the street to the dollar store and they only have about four or five of these tall cylinders left and like i said it's a buck so you can play around make some different designs try some different you know make a test one try different burn settings for your laser but for a dollar very easy to throw away if something goes wrong so I kind of like these ones better because they're a little shorter and fatter the fatter they are the the more pattern you're gonna be able to get wrapped around them but like you said when I can get seven dollars to a dollar these will work just fine if you can find a little fatter ones this is a four inch base and you can see it's got a little hanging extra but it can go up to four inches any bigger it won't fit on there you can you can go bigger, but then you're going to be stuck to having the bottom on the bottom side and maybe having to try to find some kind of lid. But a lot of different things are functional with this. You can do cubes, you can do cylinders, you can do anything you want to put on here that will light up. So a lot of functions to it and very cheap. The only other two things I needed for this project was some black paint and some frosted glass paint. Now I've seen other people do these and everybody does them different. You know, it's whatever your style is. Uh, some people will pre-paint the cylinder with white to create the base coat and then they'll coat it black and then they'll burn through the black trying to leave just enough of the white paint underneath that when you light it from inside, the white paint will act as a diffuser and help catch more of the light and make it glow better. Now, that works just fine if you're if that's your style. But what I found is easiest is you get your glass, pull all the stickers and price tags off of it, give it a good cleaning with some glass cleaner or acetone, get all the oil and residue off of it. And then you'll flip it upside down and put it on a rotating base so you can kind of spin it as you're painting and keep putting on light coats until you get it to where it's thick enough to where the light no longer shines through it. I, I, I power dry, I'll, I'll do a thin coat 
and take my blow dryer, power dry it for three or four minutes, and then do a second coat, power dry it for three or four minutes. And usually about by the third coat, once it's dry, I'll put it on the put it on the light up base, light it up, and make sure I don't have any big light leaks coming through the paint. There's there's always going to be the occasional little spot where if you're up close, you might be able to catch a little light coming through it, but you just want to make sure it's thick enough that the whole glass isn't glowing. And how my painting technique is, it's it was right about three coats, maybe almost four. It just depends on how thick a coat you're putting on. So that's something you're going to have to kind of experiment and find out how thick and how close you paint will affect that all. But usually the thinner the better. Keep it from running and go from there. I'll jump over and give you all my, show you my light burn settings. But what they are is... For my Pro, I can run this at about 9,000 millimeters per minute, pretty much maximum speed. The max speed is 10,000, but it seems like once I start pushing over 9,500, just depending on how fast it's moving, it'll I'll hit the vibration sensor or the motion sensor and it'll shut down. I seem to have a lot less problems if I kind of keep it right at 9,000. Other than that, I usually run it between 80 and 85 percent power and a 254 DPI, and that seems to get it, all the image cleared off pretty well, where it doesn't take any kind of scrubbing, it'll come out pretty clear. Just run it under some cool water with a like a soft sponge, and kind of give it a light brushing just to remove any light residue left on the image. And now with the way my rotary set up, to get it to come out where you can read it, the image has to be flipped. So, like mine was sitting in the rotary like this. Here was the headstock. I had to have the image rotated up to the Y axis and then the image flipped. So it looked backwards on the screen and that got the text to come out in the proper orientation. You'll have to know how your rotary is set up and how, what orientation you have to use to get the text to come out legible. So, once all your image is done, Get your frosted glass, find something that you can set down on the inside to kind of cover up the base. Just a piece of paper folded up and stuck in there, just something that you, you just don't want to frost over the base, on like on this style anyways, because you're going to be shining the light up through it. Like with this one, that's another good thing about this, it won't matter, you're not ever going to cover up that base. Every, you just got to remember the bottom is now the top, so orientate your image in that orientation. Other than that, like for this one, cover up that bottom, put in your frosted glass. Now this, this stuff here also takes about, you know, probably at least four to six coatings. You're going to want to put it on and just kind of spritz it in there, rotate it around, get it on that inside. And when it first goes on, it looks clear, but as it dries, it'll turn the glass opaque. And once again, that's just acting as a diffuser, just so that there's something for the light to catch and make it light up. So you can just keep putting on more and more coats of that until you get it as opaque as you want. The more opaque, you know, probably the better off it is, the more light it's going to be able to catch. But this stuff isn't the cheapest. I think this stuff usually runs around 10 bucks a can, but it doesn't take very much. But it does, one thing to warn is it does run very easy if you overspray it. But even then, long as it has time to dry, you might get a ripple where it's ran, but it, it still turns opaque. But just a little is better, and a lot of, a lot of thin coats is probably the way to go. Other than that, like I said, this is a fun little project. It's great for gifts, for like holiday events. Like I said, it's also a great deal for little kids' bedrooms, for makeshift lamps, and light up pieces for fun. So give it a try. It's your biggest investment is going to be these little bases and they're, they're only $12, $13. So fun little project. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. 
and I'll see you on the next video.